what are your future plans for Cohost High School? Well, let's start with the closure. First of all, we're following the, the governor's executive order, and that's important. We can't just decide to close school. We need to also make sure that we are getting our state aid based on any closure. So that's why we are uh, continuing to closely follow what the governor is saying. We are following the continuity of learning under the governor's closure and that we've migrated to a virtual environment, which I'm really proud of, of all of our students and all of our teachers, because that was something that really happened overnight. And yeah. it was something we hadn't practiced with students. It was something we hadn't practiced with teachers. We had to, um, you know, hand out Chromebooks and, and we're still doing that for, for students who, who have the, um, you know, who, who need a Chromebook. Um, also home internet, that's a challenge. So, so that's something I think that we all need to work together on to see about getting um, getting every Cohost family, um, you know, uh, access and connectivity. What do you like to do in your free time when we're not in like closure or during a pandemic? So I like to walk my puppy dog uh, there, his name is, and, and I live in Cohost, so uh, walk there around Cohost and, and he loves the bike trail. That's his one of his favorite go-to spots. Um, I like yoga, so I like to engage in yoga. Um, I have three boys, so I'm uh, a mom of three sons, and one of my sons is a senior in college, and, and he's here with me now, and he's taking online classes, so, uh, so that's great to be with him, but I, I love my, my family, um, so that's important to me. Where did you grow up? So I'm from Utica. Have you heard of Utica? Just a little bit further west on the New York State Thruway. So I grew up in Utica, um, attended schools in Utica, and I uh, um, I was a, decided I wanted to be a teacher. So I was in English as a second language teacher, and I worked in the Utica City School District, and we accepted refugees from all over the world, but mostly uh, Bosnia. And that was in the mid 90s when I was a teacher at Proctor High School. And so that was really exciting for me. And uh, then I wanted to be a principal. So I continued my education, became a principal in the Utica City School District. And uh, then there was an opening in New Hartford, the, the, the town right next door. And that's where I lived. And I lived in my grandfather's house. And uh, so I became a principal in New Hartford at New Hartford High School. I was there for 10 years. I actually was the high school principal to my three sons. So, so that was really special. Um, and then there was, I decided I wanted to be a superintendent. Uh, and I got my doctorate here in the Albany area. So when there was the, the first opening here in, in the capital region, it was Coho City School District. That was over five years ago. And I decided, you know, I wanted to apply. So, so I applied and, and here I am um, over five years later and, and happy to be here as the leader of the Cohen City School District. What slash who inspired you to, to do your job? To be a superintendent? Yeah, like to get you in like the like teaching educating world. So I was inspired um, to become an English as a second language teacher. I had traveled a lot in high school and in college. And when, after I, I went to Syracuse University and after I graduated from Syracuse University, I, I landed in Boston and I started tutoring refugees. And I was just so captivated by their story and by their tenacity to learn English and to have a better life here in the United States. So that was really the driving force and in my inspiration to become a teacher and to become an English as a second language teacher. What do you most like about your job? So I love, I love. The opportunity for students. So that is my absolute favorite part of the job that I can improve students' lives, their futures, their trajectories. And that's what makes me really happy and really proud. And I'm proud in, of my, my work here with the Board of Education and my administrative team in the Cohoes City School District. I think we've been able to bring a lot of opportunities here that otherwise uh, weren't in place before I got here. So CDTA, Future Ready Pathways, 
more dual credit courses, more advanced placement courses, SAT day, um, just uh, a few things. How are you staying busy right now, like during this? Yeah, so believe it or not, I'm busier now than I was <laughs> um, because when you're in a virtual world, you know, you have a lot of meetings, you have to connect with people and things are changing so quickly. So I have to be aware, what is the governor saying today? What are the new directives from the New York State Education Department? So whatever those directives are, it is up to me, to my team here in the school district to make sure that we are implementing those changes effectively so that we are, you know, continuing as, as we said, to uh, have continuity of learning for our students and continuing our operations as normally as normally as possible. How do you think the students of the district are handling this? I think, uh, I mean, I'm just so proud of the students. Um, the students have migrated so quickly to a whole new world, a whole new environment. And I know there are a lot of challenges at home. Um, I know many parents maybe lost a job Many parents are on the front lines working in healthcare or in other capacities as essential workers. Um, and many parents are working from home. So they're sharing devices and they're trying to each go into a, a quiet spot in the house. So, so, and parents are becoming teachers. So I know that there are a lot of challenges, but I am so proud of how our students are, are handling all this, how supportive our families have been. And I'm just so grateful. And yes, do we want to get back to school? Of course, we would like to get back to school. That will be really important. Um, but we need to follow the orders of the governor as to when that will happen and when that what that looks like. What can students do to keep up with assignments? Well, uh, so there is a schedule. Um, and I think students really need to also reach out to teachers, take advantage of those check-in periods, and um, if they reach out to friends, definitely, uh, if they need help, reach out to their counselors, reach out to principals, anybody. So we are here, and I know that that goes both ways. I know teachers are reaching out to students, but I would also request that students also reach out to, to teachers so that we can um, have that two-way communication and we can hear from you as to how can we help, you know, what supports who our students need right now. Last question. What can the district do to increase student engagement and to emphasize the importance of education? So I think that's where we need your help as well. Because I know some students um, have, you know, maybe feel that they don't have to do the work right now, or maybe students don't have any internet access. So it could be a student wants to participate, but maybe they don't have a way to do that. So we need, again, other students to reach out to their friends and let us know who needs help. So, so these are messages we need to get out. And we definitely need students to know that it's still very important to participate, complete assignments, and to be in communication with us. So that's why we all need to work together and we need to know um, what students may need some assistance. Yeah. And that was it. Well, you had great questions, Emily. Thank you.